Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Spencer. Um, I want to talk to you today about superior customer relations. Uh, this is really geared to companies and also professional sales people. Um, so this is part one, superior customer relations. Nearly every business, uh, when we go to their website, they, they tell us how good their customer relations are and how important this is to their business. And if this is what your business is telling everyone, is your business walking the talk? Because what I'm seeing is a high percentage of businesses that are in fact not doing what they say. Is that because they don't know how? Or perhaps there's other reasons. Customers of today are not experiencing the level of satisfaction that customers have been receiving previously. And the relationships between customers and retailers has definitely slipped over the years. If you're old enough to remember what it's like being a buyer or seller, say 20 years ago, then you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. This is not to say the strength of relationship between customer and business was always better in the past, because that certainly was not always the case. When it comes to how things are today relative to the buyer or seller, this is likely the new normal. And every business is getting online. And that was happening long before the current pandemic, but this situation has merely fueled the fire and more businesses are forced to embrace e-commerce in order to try and survive. Younger generations today and generations to follow will not even realize that there was previously a different way in which business was conducted. There are always exceptions with businesses, and there are businesses today that still practice relationship building the old way. I'm talking about face-to-face -face getting to know your customer. I know it's difficult with right now with what we're faced with, but when things improve, it's about going for a game of golf together, or hockey or baseball game, or just having a few drinks together. And if you can maintain this type of relationship building or something similar with the customer for, say, 10 to 12 months, consistently you have very likely scored yourself a good loyal customer, and probably built a great friend too. But what kind of companies can support this level of service? For one, it takes considerable time to build a relationship to the point of generating a sale. And secondly, it is very expensive. The kind of sales I'm referring to is a customer that's spending, let's say from $100,000 to a million dollars plus per year. So this might mean one or two purchases during the year or maybe monthly purchases, say, of a consumable product. This is where the real face-to-face -face relationships is the key to see your success. If a customer likes you, he or she will buy from you. It's that simple. This is, of course, assuming that the product you have is at least equal to or better than that which the customer is currently buying from company X. Of course, price is a huge consideration, and as always will be, so your price will need to be close to that of company X. You know pretty fast if you're going to work well with this customer or prospective customer. If a prospective customer doesn't like you regardless of reasons, then you may as well pass this prospect on to another sales representative. There are key reasons why companies are not walking the talk. It's not easy. Customer service at these levels costs a lot of money and it takes time. And many companies simply do not have the financial resources to sustain this level of expense. So they take a shortcut. Being a reseller of basically the same product or service that everyone else has and trying to operate a successful business is challenging to say the least, especially when every reseller has basically the same gross margin to work with. So how do you come out the winner in this case? The winner is the one who has the customer they have the best relationship with. So what happens to the businesses that don't have the relationship they need with their customers to sustain business? As competitors, companies end up cannibalizing their margins to the point that no one is making any money. And unfortunately, that is what it's come to today. And I think I'm pretty safe in saying that this is across all industries. The customer may be deemed the winner in this case, as he or she got the product they wanted at the lowest possible price. Let's just hope that this customer doesn't need any service in addition to the 1% margin product they just purchased. It is possible to have a successful business, even with minimal customer relations, and that is when the business is virtually no competition that's close by. The second is when you have a far superior product or service, but this is really rare. 
With either or both of these winners, this business would more than likely become their preferred place to do business. While this may not happen often, it's a nice break for the business that they could actually make enough money to survive. Thank you for listening, and this is Spencer signing off, coming to you soon with part two of Superior Customer Relationship Building. Thank you.